Now we'll talk about electric current and the magnetic field produced by current flow through a wire. And let's talk about the simple case first where we just have a piece of wire and the current flowing. But there's a bit of confusion about which way the current flows. If we imagine a bunch of electrons moving along this wire, so I'll just draw a little negative signs to indicate the electrons. And let's say they're moving through the wire in this direction. Well, electrons are negative and negative charge moving to the right, it turns out, is exactly the same thing mathematically as positive charge moving to the left. So you could imagine electrons moving through the wire to the right, which is really the case, or you can imagine little positive particles moving through the wire to the left, which is not actually what happens, but which is mathematically identical negative stuff going in one direction is exactly the same thing as positive stuff going in the opposite direction. And electricians and people who work with electricity and most physicists as well who deal with this tend to prefer to think of the charge as positive. And so we have this what we call conventional current because this is by convention the way it's always been done. Uh, originally physicists didn't know if it was positive or negative charge uh, moving and they just guessed that it was positive and that convention stuck. So we have what we call conventional current which re refers to positive current flowing through the wire. Even though that doesn't really happen, it's electrons that move, we can pretend like it's positive charges moving. Just pretend like they're going in the opposite direction. Now we said earlier that the symbol for current is I, so let's draw this as I'll write I here for electrical current and we'll imagine positive current flowing in this direction. And when we figure out the shape of the magnetic field around the wire, we think of it as the positive current flow. And we, we use what's called the right hand rule. And this gives us a way to picture, to picture the direction of the magnetic field around the wire. And here's the right hand rule. That you imagine taking your right hand and placing it over the top of this wire such that your thumb, and that's not a real great hand, but just go with it here, such that your thumb points in the direction of the current flow. So imagine putting your hand right there, just laying it down on top of that wire, your right hand, such, such, such that your thumb points in the direction of the current flow. Then your fingers would naturally curl around the wire in this direction. And that is the direction of the magnetic field around the wire. So I'll draw that like this. The magnetic field lines are really these um, circular lines around the wire. But we know which way the field is pointing by the right hand rule. And you could draw more field lines further out and they would spread out more further away. But it's hard to draw more and keep your diagram reasonably neat something like that. That's a visual picture of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. Now it gets uh, more interesting if we think about the magnetic field around a loop of wire. And this is tricky to draw, but let me give it a shot. Let's imagine and, and try to picture this in perspective. Here's a piece of wire and then imagine it forms this loop like that. And let's imagine current flowing in this direction. So it flows around the wire like this. So these little arrows represent the direction of the current flow. So it goes in the wire there and out the wire there. Well, if you use the right hand rule and say you come over to this section of the wire right here and you put your, put your hand under it like you're reaching under it to lift it up. So your th the thumb of your right hand points that way in the direction of the current flow. Then your fingers would naturally curl around the wire in this direction. So there's a magnetic field around the wire in that direction. And if you go around the wire and continue to, to do that, you get these little loops representing the direction of the current flow around that wire. So it looks something like that. Not particularly easy to draw, 
But what you notice is that everywhere inside the wire, if you picture this correctly, everywhere inside the wire, the field is upward. And then everywhere outside the wire, the field is downward. But outside the wire, as you get farther away, it quickly weakens. And inside the wire, you get this nice strong magnetic, magnetic field in one direction. Now that leads us to the idea of the magnetic field around a coil. So if you imagine, instead of taking a loop of wire, take a wire and then run it around in a loop numerous times. So you have this coil, and then you send electric current in one end and out the other. What you get is a lot of magnetic field all around that wire. And instead of just uh, just one loop, you have many loops, and the magnetic field from all of those loops add up, and you get all of these magnetic field lines inside. You get a very strong magnetic field inside, and then these field lines loop around like this. And it's very much like the magnetic field around a bar magnet. And this essentially is a magnet. And you end up with a magnetic north pole at one end and a south pole at the other. And this is what you would call an electromagnet. It's a magnet made from electric current. And it turns out that it, re it really won't be all that strong if you just make loops of wire. Now it depends on how many loops there are and how much current there is. If you, if you put a lot of wire there and really turn up the voltage, you're going to get a strong magnet. But there's something you can do to make the magnet really, really strong. And that is, put a piece of iron inside the loop. And so one way you can actually do this is take something like a nail. So say you take an iron nail. So here's a picture of an, uh, an iron nail. And say you take some wire and you wrap it around. And you might wrap it 50 or 100 times. And then the wire runs back out. And then over here you have a battery. And you can do this with a regular flashlight battery or a little AA battery or something like that. Just a little 1.5 volt battery will do it. And you connect the wire to one end here and to the other end there. And so you get some current flow. Currents flowing in one way and out the other. Well, you get a magnetic field produced inside this coil of wire over here. And the iron, it turns out, becomes magnetized as a result and produces additional magnetic field. And having an iron core in there like that can produce a magnetic field that is thousands of times stronger than if it weren't there. And this is the way to make an electromagnet, is to use an iron core like that. And they can be really strong. You see them sometimes at, at scrap yards, at junkyards, uh, picking up old cars. You've got this cable coming down, and there's this device hanging here. And it's a giant electromagnet. Inside it are all these coils of wire with um, electric current running through them. And it becomes really strong, and it can pick up an old junk car just by st uh, sticking, magnetizing the roof of the car and sticking to it. And they use that to move junk from one place to another in a junkyard. Another way to make a really strong electromagnet is to use what's called superconductors. And you're not going to do this at your house, but it's interesting to talk about. Uh, superconductors have no electrical resistance. If you're trying to make an electromagnet like this or like this, you're limited by how much current you can put in there. If you really turn up the voltage, it's going to get hot and it's going to melt if you really crank it up. But a superconductor is a material that has no electrical resistance. And that allows you to turn up the voltage really high without it getting hot. Uh, there's still some limits. There's still some saturation limits to how much current you can, you can put through a superconductor. But it's not, um, it's not limited from from the heat, from the thing actually physically melting. And so they use superconductors to make really strong magnets in um, particle accelerators where they're doing high energy physics experiments, or in some places on, um, on a train where they use a magnetic field to levitate a train up off the tracks. It doesn't run on wheels. It just floats just barely above the tracks held up by a magnetic field. And um, there's a couple of those around that are done with superconducting materials and electromagnets made of superconductors. Pretty cool stuff.